talk about fears well, Let's talk about Welcome back to Unsolved No More. So yesterday, you know, I uh, posted the Don Miller deep dive. And so today uh, we're going to do the live, which is uh, Thursday, but I'm going to be posting this video Friday, which is for our comments and uh, questions. Uh, first, of all, I just want to thank everybody for such uh, great responses and the tremendous amount of respect and sincere gratitude that you leave me in the comment section especially about this last case um, it does mean a lot to me and I appreciate it and uh, you know we'll go from there so just I want to just wanted to thank all of you so let's start off with some questions here I'll see if I get some questions a lot of these are comments but uh, I'll go uh, Let's see. Kentucky Bluebird, she comments a lot, so I just want to get to her. I don't think she's a member, so I don't see her in our live chats, but she's here a lot. Unsolved No More, Johnny Cash. What more could a girl ask for on a cool Kentucky day? I agree. You know, maybe a cup of coffee to go with that. You know, you're good to go. Uh, I see in your eyes this is a personal and a heart-wrenching case for you. It, it certainly was. Edward Wirtz, my comment disappeared. That seems to happen a lot, Edwards. I I don't, you know, I do delete or block. I don't delete comments. I block people. You know, if they ever leave anything disrespectful about the victim or the victim's family or me, um, I just block them. It's that simple. I don't play around. You know, these people... You know, half of them, three quarters of them wouldn't say anything like that to your face, but they'll say it in the comment section, so I don't even deal with it anymore. I just block them. You, however, I would not do that too. Uh, I don't know why your comment disappeared, but I have had that happen a lot, and a lot of people have told me that that has happened to their comments. All I can say is just, just redo it. And, you know, it's a YouTube thing. Yesterday it took me it took me 48 hours to upload a deep dive video yesterday. I kept running into problems of it not processing on YouTube side and this and that and so it, it took me forever and it was very frustrating but I finally got it taken care of so just got to keep trying just like a investigation. You just got to keep hammering no matter what brick wall you hit. Just keep going. Florence, Florence comments a lot on my videos. I appreciate it. I followed you a long time now. Your subscribers have gone up. It's definitely because you include us and get our brains working as semi detectives. Thank you, Ken. This is extremely interesting. Got me thinking while drinking my coffee. Florence, thank you very much for your comment. And I do uh, want to include you guys because, much like Elvis says, you know the fans can have the shirt off of my back, right? Because they put it there. And I, I believe that as well. You know, for me to have the amount of subscribers and, and fans that I have, you know, and it all starting back, you know, a little bit before the History Channel show that I did, um, I'll never forget that. Like, I'll never forget where I come from and I'll never forget what it's like to be a fan because I was a fan. So... You know, I always will try to include you guys, never talk down to you, try to speak 
uh, intelligently, articulately about these cases so you understand them and know where I'm coming from and hopefully that helps maybe solve a case in the future. I, you never know. K. Shea, the passion you have for this woman who you never met, who everyone forgot is incredible. Thank you. Well, thank you. My necklace is choking me. Just noticed that. Mm. See? This is all live, baby. This is how I do it. I could have edited that part out, you know, because I didn't. it didn't look right. I don't care. Okay? So, what you see is what you get out of me. Jen Graham. Great video. This world needs more people like you. Thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate that. I don't want this to turn into a love fest. A lot of these comments on this uh, particular deep dive and uh, stuff was about me, um, praising me. And although I certainly appreciate it, I think the focus needs to be on the victim. Uh, so I'm not going to read all those comments. Although, trust me, it means a lot to me and I appreciate all the comments and well wishes and, you know, the uh, everything that comes with it. I, I really do from the bottom of my heart, but I'm not going to read them all. So if I skip yours, know that I did read your comment. It meant a lot to me, but, you know, I don't want this to be about me because it's not. <sighs> okay, this is from Gina. So Gina is a member and she helps me out with a lot of stuff. And she uh, is very bright and articulate and has some great questions and comments. Solved or unsolved, question mark. I think for an officer, until a body or remains are found, it's unsolved because when they can know that they did all they could and it's the prosecution's turn to see to the conviction. But for Dawn's mother, I would imagine that it was not as important. She would want to know who was responsible and what her daughter's fate was. I can't know for sure since I'm not a mother, but I can imagine. You're right. Everything you said there, Gina, is correct. I felt, uh, I guess I felt that it's unsolved, again, just like you said, because I did not locate Dawn's remains, but solved in my mind, and that's how a lot of cool cases are. They get solved up here. You may never make it to trial, because it's not the detective's job to make it go to trial. It's the detective's job to gather as much evidence as you can, put the narrative out there, and then you have to rely on a district attorney who may not even have the same conviction as you and may not have the same ideologies as you, may not even like you, okay? Attorneys and police think differently, trust me. Um, there's an attorney now in the district attorney's office in Williamsport. Uh, he's a, the first assistant that I can't stand most disrespectful punk made attorney there is. I've never been treated with such disrespect as I was with this little sniveling little punk. Um, so, you know, that that's the way it is. It's your job as a detective to solve the case. That's That's it. And you can present it. So when you retire, if it didn't get a conviction, if it didn't even make it to trial, does that mean it's not solved? No, I don't believe that. Uh, so, solved or unsolved, this one, I'm saying solved. Luke B, notice me. I'm noticing you right now, Luke. I don't know what more I can do. Addy Edger. Ken, do you know if the woods where Greg took his life was looked into as a possible burial location for Dawn? If so, what measures were taken to check the area? Okay, and I'm sorry I did not address this. I, I've had this in the first videos and a few videos. Yes, of course. Um, of course, I took that very serious. Serious enough where I brought a cadaver dog in and we searched the area again. And the cadaver dog alerted in one area and that's where Greg, Greg hung himself um, so he was alerting off of Greg's scent not Dawn's even though I did check that area just to be sure you know uh, with the ground penetrating radar and such 
I don't believe I don't believe where he hung himself has anything to do with Dawn. Um, but that's a, a very good question and something that I certainly thought of. Gina again. Greg, slipping away in the middle of the night. My first thought, moving Dawn's remains. Uh, yes, but he kept going back to that area. It wasn't just one night. It was the one night that the roommates went and followed him, but it was not the first night he did that, which leads me to believe maybe he, he possibly could have been removing the remains, but this was a number of years later. I believe that Greg removed the remains within days, maybe even the very next day, because where they initially buried her is a populated area. You would certainly, somebody would have noticed it, okay? It was it was haphazard. It wasn't like it was dug, you know, with a backhoe or even shovels. They used stones to scoop the dirt out. So she wasn't very deep. Joe says around 18 inches, and I, I have a hard time even believing he got that far down. But regardless, she would have been found. I think Greg was smart enough that the next day he went back and he moved her. Now, where to is certainly up for interpretation. Greg, finding the female wig in his truck, finding the fake pair of female breasts, uh, in clothing, I think he had something a little bit deeper going on. He, you know, he sexually molested his uh, younger niece, and then the day that he committed suicide, he tried to rape his teenage niece. So it has always been my belief that he was going back to the location to masturbate. Um, whether he's looking at the remains or just the burial spot itself that's that's my belief in understanding uh offenders and killers that's what i believe was happening but again could have been possible he was removing the remains <laughs> sharon nolfi fantastic series this week i will always remember don miller what is the music that plays in the beginning of your videos? Okay, a couple of things there. Thank you for the fantastic series this week. I will always remember Don Miller. Thank you for that. That's all that I've asked for anybody. What is the music? It is Dallas Kincaid, Fear and Love. A little bit about my intro and the music. I originally didn't have that music. I had like a Western type of uh, no words no lyrics, just music. Um, and then I came across this Dallas Kincaid in that Fear and Love. And I thought it fit me perfectly. A little dark, a little sinister, but yet catchy. <laughs> so I got that. And it's a perfect analogy. Is that the right word? Dichotomy between myself and that song or that music and that intro. People either love it or they hate it. And I think that's so perfect because that's me. I find that people have no middle ground for me. I never met anyone who's like, yeah, he's all right. They either love me or they hate me. And I'll take that because that's how I look at cases, black and white. You know, it's either this way or this way. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's how I look at it. Um, so I get so many good and bad comments about just that intro. People tell me, well, it's too long. I find it crazy people take this time to comment that it's too long. First off, I don't care what you think. It's my channel. It's my intro. You think the Dukes of Hazard with Waylon Jennings playing that people thought, oh, that's too long. You think Waylon Jennings cared? You think the Dukes boys cared? That's what they like. If you don't like it, skip ahead. And somebody said, I hate your music, but I skip ahead. Well, good. I can get on board with that. 
but it is what it is, folks. You cannot please everybody. I've learned that a long time ago. So, for those that like it, it's there. Keep watching it. Keep listening. For those that don't, move on. All right. My here, Tangsel. I think that Greg may have moved the dawn when he saw it followed with his friends. Yes, we just talked about that. I agree. Darlene, I appreciate your conviction. It's good to see human empathy and take care for them. I do have one question regarding the case. I believe you said the sister said there was a suicide note, but she destroyed it. Is that tampering with evidence? Could she not be compelled to disclose what was in the note? That is a very, very good question. Um, I guess, I guess it would be considered tampering with evidence depending upon what was written in the note. If he confessed or he disclosed Don's uh, remains, the location of it, yes. But, you know, there is a limited amount of people that know that answer. So, I don't even know if there was a note. That was just uh, what I had heard. It makes me think, though, you know, it's a shame. It's a, shame. it's a shame that if he did write a note and disclosed what happened to Dawn and where she's buried, that the sister would be so callous and such a bitch that she would hide that and destroy it so nobody would know. And I've had a run-in or two with her. And... There's some words I could use to describe her. Listen, I get sticking up for your family members. I'm all about family. That is that is paramount to me, to my character, to who I am. So I get that. But when your family member has done wrong, everybody already knows he did it. There was a confession He's no longer here to serve time. You have to weigh all of that and then think, well, maybe it, maybe I should give it up. That's if it exists. That's the way I would think. Nice job, detective. JB Stuff, thank you. Jazz Quebec. I've seen a couple comments by Jazz, so thank you. Sir, one simple word. Wow, you nailed me on the spot. Well, you should, let's rephrase that. I didn't nail you at all. Definitely not on the spot. But I know what you mean. I was hypnotized on this case, came back to life. No, I didn't see you as ridiculous. I understand very well your feelings. Oh, thank you very much. Holly Hold, you're too rare in law enforcement. In life, you are who you are, what you do. Thank you. Let's get to some questions. Detective Maines, who sings your song at the beginning? I got into that. Uh. Peggy, the system fails. It happened to me. What well, it does? It. We don't have a perfect justice system. Okay, we got the best. I think for. Well, but it, it certainly can be critiqued. You know, I often thought about having a panel, you know, of much like the uh, Supreme Justice System, where you have not just one judge looking at something. So if a cop makes an arrest for murder, now remember this, you're affecting somebody's life forever when you arrest them, right or wrong. You better be right. That cop, now he has to get a district attorney's approval to file those charges. So those two people can affect somebody's life by one little signature approving it. They get arrested, they go to jail. Let's say it gets thrown out, not enough evidence. Let's say they get found innocent because maybe they are innocent. But that guy's whole life is ruined. And he may have not have done a dang thing wrong. And it's not right. So maybe 
instead of having just one or two people, the police officer and the district attorney, uh, approve charges, why can't there be a panel of you know, five people, five experts, homicide detectives, cold case detectives, judges, retired attorneys, and they look at it and they say, yes, there is enough here. I don't know. It's a thought that I've had, you know, so maybe innocent people would not be arrested and their lives ruined. Um, but then again, like I've always said, you can't get five people to agree what color of the sky is. So how are you going to get five people to agree on a murder charge? So maybe the system is the best as it's going to get. Uh, do you have Discord? Terry Oliver. I've just recently, I think, learned what Discord is. Uh, when people used to ask that, I would think that I would thought that that was a adjective describing something. Like, do you have irritation? Do you have discharge? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but now I realize it's not that. It's like an app where people can talk. No, I don't have Discord. And I don't have discharge. And I don't... Well, I do have irritation. I get irritated a lot. But no, to answer your question. I'm glad I can laugh a little bit with these questions and stuff and comments because it takes away from all the emotion that I had earlier this week going through the case and the sadness, the uh, just the emotional tool, you know, that this week has played on me going through all, everything again. So it's nice to actually smile and go through these comments. So thank you for them. Terry Oliver. Wow, I lost a friend named Don Miller to a car crash when I was in high school. I thought about her throughout your video. See how things, you know, they play. It's crazy. Found you a couple of weeks ago and love your channel channel. I normally don't comment, but this one is a special one. You said Don's mom gave you a very memorable hug for believing her and working your butt off to get to the bottom of an awful situation. Why well, I believe when you pass and go to heaven, Don will give you as hug tight and sincere as her mom did. Thank you. Uh, that's touching. I appreciate that. Maria, I do believe this is the video I fell in love with you. Your strength and passion is one of a kind, Ken. Thank you for being you. Let me talk about passion a little bit. And You know, I often say it doesn't matter what vocation you're in, whether you're a teacher, a veterinarian, you're an actor, a filmmaker, or a detective. If you are put, If you are doing something that you are passionate about and you have a little bit of talent to back that up, you will be successful. And I am fortunate enough to be doing something that I'm passionate about. And I got ridicule about this. I'm telling you. You guys would not believe. You think that all the police officers and detectives are the same way. And they're not. They're not. In 20 years, I found it very rare. Now, when I created the American Investigative Society of Cool Cases, then... I started seeing some of the people that were passionate like me. That's when I saw it. But in the departments that I worked, no. Three quarters of them there were there just to collect the paycheck. They may have had a fire in their belly for the first year or two. And then they just get so downtrodden by the bureaucracy of the government and the then the system, you know, you arrest somebody, then they're out two weeks later, and then you arrest them again, five years later, and then ten years later, you're arresting their kids, and it, it just brings you down. You just got to keep that fire, you know, and go. But when I started this cold case stuff, when the district attorney hired me to work on a specific cold case, and then I started doing all the cold cases in the county, I was met with ridicule, especially by the Pennsylvania State Police that I... You know, I will never forgive some of them. And it's weird because when I worked in the narcotics 
unit. And I worked hand in hand with the state police, their narcotics unit. There's not one that I could speak bad about. Not one. Um, they worked with me. They, they, you know, it was great. Some great individuals. But on the outside of the narcotics unit, the, the criminal investigative side of the state police, we did not get along. We did in the beginning. But then when I started investigating one of their cold cases, um, when I started talking to one of their suspects and witnesses, man, calls were made to the district attorney. Who do I think I am? You will not interview another one of our cold case witnesses. I don't care if they come to the district attorney's office with information. You'll send them down the state police. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. I don't care if you're the state police. You don't intimidate me. You're telling me if somebody comes down here with information on one of your cold cases, I'm going to send them away so they have time to say, no, I changed my mind. I already went out of my way to drive to the district attorney's office to tell somebody this information that I've had for 20 years. I'm not going to go to another place. And then you never get that information? Think how asinine that sounds. Okay? There was like three or four state troopers that really believed that and had the balls not to tell me that to my face, of course, but to tell it to my boss, the district attorney, who told me, and I flatly told the district attorney, <laughs> you, you might as well fire me now. If you think that I'm going to listen to that bullshit, no way. And then my immediate supervisor, the chief county detective, he took me out. He said, let's go out to lunch. We went out to lunch, and he, he's sitting there trying to explain it, and God bless his heart, you know. He was a, he's a good guy, still is a good guy, but he was trying to convince me to do what the state police said, and I said, there, <laughs> all due respect, there's no goddamn way I'm listening to them. I'm just not. So, anyhow, that's my uh, irritation with, and I'm going to do that case, and they can go fuck themselves. I'm going to do the case here. Um, it's the one case that they got all butthurt about because I was looking into it. Well, guess what? Nothing you can do about it. You couldn't do nothing about it then. You, you think you're going to do something about it now? You know? Hey, I am pro-law enforcement. But I'm pro-truth more. Okay? And I go by my own rules. I, and that and that's just how I, I operate. I've always operated that way. You can either be on board with me or not. And I, I don't care which one it is. I'm going to do what I want to do because it's what's right and it's what's just. These people got upset. Because the newspaper ran an article about me looking into their case. They got upset because it generated calls to them. And I actually got an email from the investigator by accident. She meant to send it to her boss. Saying, here we go again. Real sarcastic because all, all the calls were coming into them about more tips. How sickening, how disgusting is that? And I responded back to her very sarcastically. I think you meant to send this email to somebody else, not me. I'll go more into that. Now I'm getting fired up thinking about it. Anyways. Quotes, I want to ensure you get there safely. Sounds like a line from the Thin Man. Epic account, tragic, but teaching me quite a bit. Hope you poured yourself a shot after filming. Don't let the rage eat you up. People care. Can't drink whiskey anymore. I know I look like I do, and I used to. Maybe a shot of Jameson once a year. I could probably 
stomach, but I just not not built like I used to be. You can't take that whiskey. I don't know what the thin man is, but I did say to Joe, I will where you're gonna go with us so I can ensure that you safely get there. That's what I said. I'm skipping a lot of these because they are just uh, their comments, um, compliments to me. And again, I appreciate it so much. <sighs> Maria Smith had tears in my eyes. Ken, thank you for this. Makes me want to go to wherever this is and dig myself. I had tears in my eyes as well as I was filming it, thinking back to how it was. So, yes. Joy Burton, thank you, Ken. I especially wanted to watch your video tonight. Skipped all oh, skipped over all the rest. I usually watch. Two thumbs up. Well, I give you two thumbs up, Joy Burton. Thank you. Rita, very interesting. Amazing work and rewarding, no doubt. Mm, not really rewarding, to be honest with you. It was, uh, could have been more rewarding, put it that way, if I would have found her. You know, if I didn't have, I guess everybody ha goes through trials and tribulations in their job. It's just the way it is. Um, so, had a lot of them in this. And it's funny how everybody like wanted to jump aboard when they thought that I had solved and found the remains and you know then everybody wants to be your friend and then everybody wants to help. But when you're going through the grunt work, when you're up there in 110 degree heat, you know, chopping down a field with a sickle um, so you can look at the the variations in the soil and you're bringing in hydrologists to tell you which way the water runs underneath because the cadaver dog alerted here and it looks like it's downhill so you think the remains are up here on the hill so you are looking up there and then you bring a hydrologist in and he says oh wait the water actually runs from this direction so the body you want to be looking for is going to be up here nobody was around when I was doing that nobody was around when I had a metal detector because I knew that she was wearing a denim coat um, with the zippers on it and she had earrings so I knew that if she was buried a good chance a metal detector would pick that up and I'd find her remains so when I go up there for eight hours a day uh, I don't know for two years looking searching with that metal detector and it beeping in my freaking ear every three steps and I get down and it would be a bullet you know from people hunting or something like that and a nail because somebody had thrown their old shingles off the road and nobody was around then they only come around when when the glory happens and that's sad it really is all right that's all that I'm gonna do for uh, these questions and answers I'll answer a lot of your questions tonight on the live chat so uh, I'll see you all on that okay uh, thank you once again for all the compliments. I appreciate it more than you will ever know. Subscribe. Go to Instagram. Go to Twitter. To our accounts on there now. Spread the word. If you like this show, let's get to 50,000 subscribers, okay? Let's do it. You guys are with me, all right? You know what time it is now, right? Main's out. Mm -hmm.